Well, let's uh, have a look at the uh, football from uh, this morning and a very emphatic statement made there by the Argentinians with that 3-0 win uh, over their opponents today. And uh, that's the end of Croatia. The much-vaunted back four of Croatia uh, were defrocked, as it were, by the skills of Messi and his teammates. Different kind of Messi we're seeing, isn't it? Not the guy that could drink his way past 10 defenders and past the goalkeeper, but his skills around the field are proving equally as valuable for the Argentinians. With me now is Fred de Jong. I think still as miserable as sin after what the Argentinians did to the, the Dutch a few days ago. So uh, he might be hard-pressed to say anything complimentary about Argentina. But I don't know, Fred, I'm thinking we might well have seen the winners. Well, I suppose it's a 50-50 chance, but uh, more so than that, I think we might have been watching the winners of the Football World Cup this morning in Doha. What do you say? Ooh, big call. Big call, that one. Um, I'd, I'd still favour the French if they can get past Morocco. Uh, but certainly Argentina were impressive today. Uh, I think, no, I'm still not over the Dutch uh, performance. <laughs> certainly not over that yet. It's going to take, I'm still dirty on Portugal from 2006. <laughs> it's probably going to take oh. take a few more years uh, oh, to, Fred, get, Fred, to get over that. Fred, you're too young to be bitter. I, I can be bitter because I'm old, but uh, <laughs> you can't be. You know, it's not much of a life you've got ahead of you, mate, <laughs> if, if you can't the, bury... The, the number of teams that, are, that I'm hating on are starting to rack up. You know, Germ, Germany from 74, Portugal from 2006, Argentina 2022, um, England because they're England, so, <laughs> and now I've left for France. I th- Actually, and, and Morocco. I think I think you t- to deal with that. I think you should take yourself to the Rugby World Cup next year in France. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, no, but Argentina, very good, very very good this morning. Very good, I thought. Um, got a lucky break with the penalty, which I thought was dubious. Yeah. Um, because the guy shooting uh, misses misses, and then you know what's the keeper meant to do? Like disappear. So you know, I I, I feel that's like a natural coming together. Of of players after an after an incident, and so I thought the Argentina were were uh, fortuitous to get the penalty, um, and of course once that's once they've gone one nil up, mm, then mm. the ball's in Croatia's court. And um, but the second two goals, you, no no denying, mm. especially the third goal. Mm. Gosh, that was brilliant. You know, that's Messi at his best. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Just just going back to the penalty, I'm I'm just uh, invoking rugby law here which says that um, a defender doesn't have to move off their line in the face of an attacker running towards them. So, in, in other words, the onus and responsibility is on well, rugby, the ball carrier, to dodge uh, the defender if he holds their ground. Is it something similar in football? Uh, to a point, yeah. I mean, the keeper's come out, made himself big. Um, you know, the striker's... Run into him. Get to the ball first. Yeah. And, and has a shot. He shoot. He's not going. He's not trying. In, in this instance, the the, the attacker is not trying to go round the keeper. He's shooting. Mm. So he shoots and he misses. You know. Um, and so, at that, as, as soon as he's, you know, if if he was taking the ball round the keeper, different story. Absolutely, pen, dead set pen. But um, you know, what, what's the keeper got to do then? Is he, you know, mm. is he not allowed to actually make a play for the ball? So, I think. Yeah, I think the referee was pretty harsh in um, in awarding the the penalty, uh, and but you know, and as soon as he's awarded it, VAR is not going to overturn that, mm. and so you know, so so Argentina they get the break that they needed um, because at that point in the game, Croatia were better. Croatia were holding the ball better. They were you know they were looking a little bit more dangerous, although without really threatening the goal. Um, but but you know, as soon as you go goal down, then then you know. Argentina a difficult team to break down. Just clarify that point for me again. So the fact that he didn't go upstairs, go to the v- VAR, um, was the end of the story. So the VAR has no rights to um, interfere, I suppose, or no rights to consult with the referee about something they saw which warrants a replay. Oh, no, I mean, the VAR would, um, is looking at it. They will review it, and it's only if the v, if only a VAR is sitting there going, "I think you've made a mistake," yeah. or "I think you should oh, have okay. a look yeah. at it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they'll call they'll call well, out to the referee and say, "Well, presumably you know, they if didn't." He hadn't, if he hadn't awarded it, um, then I think VAR probably would have got involved and said, "You need you should have a look at this," and then it's up to the referee to decide whether he 
he's happy with his original decision or should overturn it. But the point I'm making here is, okay, so the VAR looked at it, and the fact that they didn't give any advice or any comment or pass an opinion down to the referee means that they must have been happy with the referee's decision. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, or, or it's not blatant enough an error mm. to warrant um, changing or getting mm. him to have a look at it to change his mind. Mm. So, um, you know, and that's the protocol of, of VAR. So, which I'm which I'm happy with. In in this instance, referees made a call, and it's the refer, you know, and then VARs look at it and said, okay, well, you know, that's the ref ref's call. Mm, and okay. I think if more. If we saw more of that through the World Cup, it would have been better. You know, too much intervention from VAR is, you know, spoils it. Yeah, you, you've you've always been riding that horse for a long time, uh, Fred. From my memory serves me correct. <laughs> yes, I think. Uh, I mean, I take a slightly different view of, of the VAR. I think that's an excellent uh, introduction to football or to every sport. But also, I hear what you're saying. There should still be room left, I suppose, for the referee to go or in invoke his his own discretion, um, have a discretionary power to make a call without necessarily having it overturned all the time by the VAR. Yeah, absolutely. I think if, if a referee um, sees something and goes, I'm, I'm right here and I'm going to stand by my decision, then he should do that, regardless of what VAR says. Mm. Um, and there's, but there's a, there's a, I was talking to a referee once, and there's a there's a there's a wording they say um, that basically means the referee on the field should go and look at the monitor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, it is almost compelled to go and look at the monitor. Mm. And um, but even then, I think the referee should be you know have have the fortitude to say no, nope, I'm right, I'm happy to stand by my call. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, no no sport has absolutely fully. Uh, implemented a, a VAR system or a TMO system that is 100% perfect because at the end of the day it still requires uh, human intervention to make decisions um, whether you're up in the uh, VAR room or on the field and so it's never rugby and cricket and all these other sports and tennis that have used um, uh, the television replay system uh, still get the odd one wrong. But I suppose, I don't know whether this is the case in football, but I know in rugby, for example, one of the virtues of the TMO, which is the equivalent of your VAR, is to stop, and in cricket, is to stop howlers, to stop blatantly bad, clearly bad decisions being made. Uh, is that happening in football? Uh yeah, I mean, FIFA will say yes. Um, I think there's still there's still some shocking decisions um, being made, and but, even you know, with so VAR. It, it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a you know a, a classic case in point was the New Zealand referee Matt Conger, um, who was doing the the France Tunisia game. Uh, you know, and it's Tunisia winning one nil, um, and you know France score a goal. Uh, a, Quite legitimate goal at the end of the end of the uh, end of the game, and um, you know Griezmann in an offside position when the ball gets played across, the defender heads the ball up in the air. Griezmann moves back on side and volleys it in, goal, mm. you know, dead set goal, and um, VAR you know calls that as offside for some strange reason. And you're just looking at it, and they, and they hung Matt Conger out to dry there. You know, because it was, you know, they've called him over to the monitor and then he's disallowed the goal, you know. And it was only lucky that the scores in the other games that were being played at the same time um, meant that this result, that result wasn't as important as it could have been. Mm. And But that could have that could have been way worse um, a, a decision. But I, I look at that and just go, well, that's, that's, a, that's a bad decision, and mm. that's VAR. Yeah. It's just a different person with a different set of eyes looking at the same problem um, from a different angle. Yes, and, you, yeah, you'll but, never, you, you can never take the um, human element no. out of human error, can you? Um, and uh, it doesn't matter how much technology and software you throw at an incident in a sporting event. No. But anyway, uh, getting, getting back to the match themselves, uh, to the match itself, <clears throat> I can imagine right now that Argentinian team would love to be playing the final about now because their confidence obviously must be sky high it's probably been the performance i've been looking for since the uh, world cup got underway so they will be hard to beat won't they mentally now uh, regardless of who they play in the final oh, absolutely and but i think on the on the flip side of that the the team that comes out of uh, france morocco will be in the same position 
you know, and, and more than likely that's going to be the French team. Um, I think that would be a much, much better final if France do get over Morocco, although Morocco being, you know, with the, the run they've had and the support they've, they've sort of galvanised right around the world, I think, mm. Um, mm. for the way that they've come through, you know, the, the, the first African nation to get to a World Cup semi-final, um, you know, uh, I think, you know, it's, and, it, and, you know, it's quite poignant, the, you know, former, a former French protectorate, uh, Morocco, you know, for about 50 years, I think it was, through the through 19, um, 1900s. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, so there's a lot of history sitting in this match. Mm. Um, but I think, in the end, uh, Morocco will defend for their life. Um, and, uh, but I don't think it's going to be enough against a, a French team that's got some um, incredible firepower up front with Mbappe, um, Dembele, Giroud, Griezmann. Mm. You know, you, what, you know, for Morocco to win, you're asking all those players to have a bad day and hard to see that happening. Although I'm surprised at the number of people, even my close and dear friend Sam Malcolmson, who thought that England marginally outplayed uh, France the other day. And my argument would be, well, they didn't score any goals from open play, and France scored two, so they deserved to be the winner, which I think was Peter Schmeichel's uh, take on the match after the game as well. Uh, so, um, you know, could fr- France, you say, expected to win that? that you, you could hardly call them overwhelming that favourite, so could you? Uh, I think they'll be heavily, heavily favoured to win. Um, mainly because, um, yes, Mor- and Morocco have done a, an incredible job defensively. You know, you look back the, since their, their coach came in five months before the World Cup, they've conceded one goal, and that was an own goal against Canada. Mm. So, you know, defen- at, at the defensive end of the field, they've done an amazing job. You know, un- unbelievable, actually. And um, so, but... In this game, they're going to. It'll be the, the 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 tone of the game is going to be is set. You know, Morocco will defend. They will get. They will have twenty percent or less possession in the game. Um, France will just have all the territory, all the play, and they'll be up against this brick wall. You know, it'll be a double decker bus parked up in front of the <laughs> penalty area. Thanks. And and so you know the 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 tone is can you know the the pace of Mbappe. Um, the skill of Dembele, the you know the, the heading ability of Giroud up top, can they crack open this defence? If they do that early, I think um, you know the, the France could run mm. out quite comfortable winners. I, I imagine the Moroccans would have watched closely that performance against England and the way that the uh, English uh, back four did a very good job on Mbappe. Didn't they? He had a very quiet game, thanks, I suppose, to how carefully he was watched by his uh, English defenders. Yeah, Kyle Walker did a great job against Mbappe, I thought. Um, he only had one run where he got past him. Boy, showed, he showed his out-and-out pace. Um, Mbappe got round the back of Walker, cut inside, and squared the ball, but um, the sort of chance mm. disappeared at that point. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think... Um, well, Morocco will sit so deep to try and deny the likes of Mbappe and Dembele on the other side. Um, they'll deny the space in behind. So they'll just sit back, and you know they they won't they won't allow Mbappe to get round the back. Mm, mm, they'll be mm. too close to their own goal. That'll be the tactic. Mm. But we saw um, Mbappe against uh, Poland. So he gets the ball wide. Now he cuts in, and he just blasted two goals from the edge of the box. So you know for every <laughs> for every tactic you put out there. The opposition have got something else up their sleeve, you know. So, and this is the problem that Morocco are going to face against this French team. You know, Mbappe can just whip the ball in, and Giroud's there. And we saw how good he is in the air against England. Yes, exactly. With, yeah, uh, yeah, with his second goal. Mm. So, there's, there's there's a lot of threats that this French team can can bring to the table. Nonetheless, uh, the other fascinating aspect about Morocco, and you alluded to it there a few moments ago, is how they changed their coach. You said five months. My understanding was that the Bosnian uh, coach uh, who parted company with the team uh, took place in August, so I think he's only been in there for three months, but if I'd said to you before the World Cup started, what chance do you give Morocco who fired their coach who got them to the World Cup, 
uh, fired him a couple of months ago, and this new guy, the ex-player from Morocco, who's now their coach, has only got a couple of months at the best to get this team ready. You would have probably said, "Oh, they've got no chance. You can't fight. You can't get rid of your coach on the eve of the Football World Cup and expect to get to the semi-finals." But um, they have an amazing story, isn't it? Oh, it's phenomenal, um, and it's probably one of the stories of the World Cup over the, the last two decades. To be honest, um, I don't think. You know, to, to to go back and find a team, um, well, certainly, as I said before, an African team never made the semis. Um, you know, the closest are the likes of Cameroon and, and the likes, um, those sorts of teams. Um, previously, we're going way back to 1990, I think, um, when Cameroon upset Argentina. And, you know, that those mm-hmm. you know that was sort of the start of the, the African wave that everyone was talking about. Africa are going to do yeah, big yeah. things at World Cups. Um, never, never eventuated, and then as you say, um, Regui, Regrag, Regragui, Regragui, the, yeah, the yeah. Moroccan coach, yeah, um, the Moroccan coach, um, you know, comes in so late, but um, has done, yeah, you know, has done a phenomenal job um, with with the defence um, to, you know, to 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 get where they have got, and I think that is. You know, when you look back at this World Cup, this will be the story of the World Cup. Yeah. And just the, 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 the support that they've galvanized through the Arab world, through the African world, um, has been phenomenal. No just, no disrespect to France. And if they are the better team uh, tomorrow and in the final and they've won it, you know, I'll be the first to congratulate them. But uh, I think it would be an extraordinary thing for football, wouldn't it, if a country like Morocco won the Football World Cup? I mean, it would even ignite the passions of players in New Zealand, wouldn't it, to think, wow, those guys can go to the World Cup and win it. What's holding us back? I mean, that feeling will just spread like wildfire around the football world, won't it, to every, all 200 countries? Uh, yes, true. A lot of people, there'll be a lot of um, teams going, you know, that that's phenomenal. But I think you also, if you dig a bit deeper, you got to fight, you, you look at where these players have come from. I mean, more than half the team, half the squad, um, weren't born in Morocco. So, you know, the um, a bunch of the players um, born, I think it's Hakimi, born in, born in Paris. Um, uh, uh, Zayac is born in born yeah, in the but but I mean, but there's they've, probably they've through, but they've come through the footballing schools of those countries of the European countries. Hmm. So they are in essence the European players who have decided that they are going to play for their the country of their parents. Yeah, but Fred, so, half, half if not all of the New Zealand team at the moment play in Europe. So I mean, um, it's the same for every country. Isn't Australia is full of European based players, um, but. Um, uh, and I'd say yeah, even, but, but even they were born in New Zealand. But even but yeah, but all of the, you know their football. They, they started their football in New Zealand. So these players weren't born in Morocco. They were born in Europe. But what about the French team? They've, they've, well, isn't there quite yeah, a few same. immigrant players from Africa in that French yeah, team? Yeah, no, 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 it's the same. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. But yeah, but they a lot of those players born. You know, um, but they've sco- they've been schooled in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the difference. This yeah. is the difference. Their, their whole footballing career has been in Europe. Yeah. And they've come through these European academies. Um, so to say, you know, so it's not taking anything away from Morocco because that's just the nature of the beast. You you pull your players from wherever you can get them. Yeah. But it's not it's not like these te- these players have been brought up in Morocco and Morocco have suddenly become, you know, putting out a, a developing footballing um, footballers of this of this quality. And, and a good example of that, how difficult it is to produce footballers of this quality, is Qatar. You look at Qatar. They, what they've tried to do to, to develop Qatarian players in the last 10, 15 years to get to this point. Um, and you can see that, that with, even with unlimited resource, they haven't been able to put a team together that could compete at this level. Mm. And, um, and so I think this is the... This is the difference, you know. The, these are these are European players playing for Morocco, um, but take nothing away from what they've done. It's it's a phenomenal story. Uh, interesting that you should mention Qatar. There, they've done a similar kind of exercise in athletics, and they've gone out and headhunted a lot of uh, athletes from around uh, the world, actually America and other parts of Europe and Africa, and given them Qatari citizenship and sent them off to the Olympic Games, where they've won gold medals. So maybe that's where the idea originally came from, because Qatar has been doing that. At, but, for, and, and for, it, sorry, yes. 
Yeah, and that's what they used to do with football. They used to have a team that was half full of half full of Brazilians, um, and they naturalized Brazilians, yeah. and then they'd put them in the Qatari team. And they but but they got to a point, and I was I mean this is speaking to uh, one of the people in Qatar. They got to a point where they realized that that's just a falsehood. Yeah, and so it can't be sustained. And, and so they decided. Mm. It's not sustainable, and mm. and so they said, no, no, that's we're gonna we're gonna try and develop our own players, um, but you know, there's only three hundred thousand Qatari citizens, half of them are women, so now you now your player pulls down to one hundred and fifty thousand, you know, half of them are, are are too young or too old, so your player pool is like shrinking very very fast. So when you actually look at what they've done, it's phenomenal mm. to be to even be at this level with the with the the player base that they've got but it just shows you it's difficult it's you know and that's the and again that's the difficulty facing countries like new zealand the player mm. pool's so small um and you've got to get them up to european level and that's hard it's really hard mm. all rich components very much part of the beautiful game fred anyway um thank you for your thoughts today on all of these uh, t- topics we'll probably talk again before the world cup final and the world cup is done and dusted and um go morocco i say tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> i think for a bit, for the for the final itself if you want a better game yeah 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 France yeah, yeah. Yes, otherwise it's going, yeah. to be, it's going to be a completely one-sided um final but yeah. um i think a france a france argentina final could be a really good game. Yeah, the idea of Messi and Mbappe on the same field opposing each other at the same time is be worth the wait. Anyway, Fred, thank you for your time. Fred de Jong with a few thoughts here on this morning's semi-final and what awaits over the next three days here on the platform.